hey guys welcome back to my channel so in today's video I'm gonna be talking more about the lab um, I'm gonna be talking more about my different roles the front of the lab the middle of the lab and the back of the lab so if you're interested in knowing more about my roles and the lab the equipment that we use and the entire lab in general and what different people positions are then please stay tuned they got me feeling like I'm the goat they asking me for some pictures and I ain't even blow I'm on my way to the top like I can't be below they telling me that I'm crazy like I ain't even know hit them with a G33 and now you see if I want me all right you guys if you don't know me hey my name is Denaya I am well today is my birthday so I am 23 years old I am a phlebotomist I do have four other certifications as well but my main certification that I use right now is a phlebotomist I am a certified phlebotomist I'm a certified medical assistant I'm a certified patient care technician I'm a certified EHR specialist and I'm a certified EKG so if you guys are wondering about my certifications I have videos on that and I also have study videos on how I pass those certification I am nationally certified in all those areas my main certification like I said that I use is my phlebotomy I love sticking people I know it may seem creepy I know it might seem scary but I love sticking people I love drawing blood I love getting that vein I love getting heart sticks I love doing hand sticks arm sticks I love it With my role I've been doing phlebotomy for about four years I have started off in a plasma center I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna really name which companies, but I started off in the plasma center, which is where I got most of my experience from. Then I moved on to dialysis. Dialysis isn't really, it is phlebotomy, but it's like a different part of phlebotomy. Like you're using a bigger gauge, you're using like tube, like more like tubing. You're using needles, but it's connected to tubing that you will have to hook up to a machine for dialysis. So I've been experienced with big gauge needles to really small gauge needles. Um, because I worked in the plasma center that used huge gauges, gauges, um, dialysis center to use big gauges as well. Then after that, I moved to the hospital and I was able to learn the different tubes, which I did learn in school. But in different hospitals, they do things differently. There's different colors depending on which insurances you have and stuff like that. It's a whole headache. So I do have videos on how I stick. I do have videos on the order of draw. And I do have other phlebotomy videos like Q&A. So like I said, I love phlebotomy. Um, I am at like a P, not like PSC, but like a doctor's office, oncology, drawing blood. And I was able to get a snippet of the lab. And I'm able to break down each section and tell you guys how the lab is and what to experience. Or if you want to really be a phlebotomist or if you want to be in the back, back, um, instead of being in the front dealing with the people and stuff like that just explaining different roles and different sections and different machines that i can explain best to my best to my knowledge um i don't know everything so things that i don't know i won't speak about it um i can tell you what a machine is but i'm not going to tell you exactly what it does if you want to know what a machine does you have the right to look it up yourself but i am more qualified in the phlebotomy department not more like the MLT department and I'll tell you guys where they work and what they do and stuff like that. So stuff that they handle, I'm gonna just say, hey, they do this on this, they do this on this, they do this on that. I'm not really gonna break it down into detail. So I hope you guys understand. I do have some clips. I am gonna be using my phone just so I can navigate this video a little bit better. So I think I'm gonna move from the back to the front I feel like that's what's best for me um, because the front is a little bit more where I can explain a little bit more about because that's where my specialty is at so we're gonna start in the back with the storage unit so in this video I'm gonna show you what my storage unit looks like and what it consists of and I'm kind of gonna explain what's in the back in the storage okay so this is the storage area we have our tubes our needles, our gloves, gauze, tissues, alcohol swipes. We got our biohazard bags. Um, we also have extra tubes, our red tops, 24 hour urines at the top. Now I'm gonna be honest, we do have a lot of stuff in the storage, storage unit. We have masks, we have tubes of course, we have 24 hour urine bottles, we have 
refrigerators. We have like four refrigerators in the back, which we have to put our 24 hour urine in. Um, we do put our blood in the refrigerator. The blood that we don't use, we save it for a week. After a week, the blood gets thrown away. So we do save the blood for a week. And if a doctor like adds on like a um, chemistry or uh, or HIV or anything like that, and we have the blood, extra blood for that person, we will pull the blood from the front and run that blood for that doctor. Um, so we do save the blood for a week. Um, we do put our 24 hour urines in the in the refrigerator as well. So there's like four different refrigerators there for different things. And we do have each refrigerator labeled like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. No, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We don't do the weekends. We are not open on the weekends. It's a doctor's office. So, and then the pee, they just go ahead. Once they get the pee, they go ahead and pour it off and do their testing and do what they gotta do. And they will either drain the pee, the rest of the pee, or send it off depending on what insurance they have and where the pee is supposed to be going um so also in the refrigerator we do do our pour offs so now we're going to move into the middle so i can tell you guys more about the pour offs and it will explain why we have to put it in the refrigerator but this is our back storage area that's where we're supposed to have everything um it's at a temperature to where stuff can't mess up tubes don't melt so it is supposed to be a little cool back there. It's gonna be a little cool back there. Um, so it's, it is cold in the lab. It has to be cold in the lab because you don't want bacteria to grow and stuff that we have to use to deal with patients. So it is cold. So now I'm about to show you guys bits and pieces of the back and then um, I'm gonna put a little voice over if I want to add a little stuff, but this is what the middle part I can't get it out. This is what the middle section is where the MLTs, the scientists and stuff be. Um, the phlebotomists, they do, some phlebotomists do be back here to spin the blood um, because the MLTs deal with more like the CBCs, the stats, the smears, the urine per wash, like for like UTIs and stuff like that or urine cultures and stuff like that. So that's where more of the MLTs will be in that middle section. We do have one assigned phlebotomist in the back that just spins the blood because like I said, the, ML the MLTs and the scientists do strictly like on stat orders to where they're sitting at the computer answering the phone all day to answer doctors call to like, hey, we need this, we need this tested, we need to add this on, we need to add this on. And that person just, that person sits and writes down the names and the doctors and then search the blood to see if we even have it to add it on. And if we don't have it to add it on, we have to call the patient back. So that's what one person does as an MLT in the back. And then they have another MLT that works strictly CBC. They run the CBC test to make sure it's not clotted, make sure everything is good, stuff like that. Then they have another person that does strictly the ordering, like the flows, um the loop panels and stuff like that then they have another person that's doing like urine and smears um another mlt is going to be doing like the send outs like they're separating the blood to sending to different insurances like lab core or centera or quest stuff like that so they're sitting and looking at the patient's paperwork Oh, okay, this patient got this insurance, so it's going to go here. Okay, this patient got this insurance, so it's going to go here. So that's what the MLTs does in the back. And they, there also is MLT that does the stats as well, um, which is where we get our gold tops and we run it straight to the back. And it's going to a fast spinner, and they're going to test it right then and there. It's not being sent off anywhere, nothing like that. It's just going to be straight spun and tested. Um, everything else that's like not a stat is going to be either sent off somewhere or it's going to be tested in-house but just not as fast so that's what that middle section is that's what the mlt does that is a associate's degree i don't know if there's like a fast accelerated program for an mlt but that's what the mlts or the scientists do in this portion where i'm at um if you guys want to add anything else in the comment section of what an mlt does Go ahead and add that that's just what i know to the best of my knowledge i'm not gonna look up nothing and say stuff and be wrong because google is not always right if you know what an mlt is help me in the comment section okay so that's what they're doing in this section so i'm gonna just show you guys that middle part 
okay so this is the back area this area right here is the spinning area as you guys can see the racks and stuff that is where we spin the tubes once it comes back and then we pour them off and all the pour offs go to um the refrigerator so that's what i was talking about with the pour offs and that is where the phlebotomist will sit and stay in the spin section of this part of the lab now we are going to graze upon the stat center um so this machine is what they use to do the stats this is this does all the chemistry tests in-house um we do not send these tests off it stays in-house and then we do the tests right then and there and we get the results as soon as possible now this station is where they have the urines they'll do the pour offs they'll do the urine cultures and urine dips in this area this is the CBC machine. This is where they run all the CBC tests, um, and then they will get the results. Only the MLTs are able to handle this area. Um, this is their computer, their phones, and this is where they also hold the CBC tubes. This is where we keep our PTINR machines, basically, you know, calculating how fast it takes the patient's blood to clot. So we always keep these back here with the CBCs because the MLTs use it and some of the phlebotomists use it as well to do the patient's finger sticks. Okay, so now we're about to talk about my part of the lab, my favorite part, because that's where I be at, okay? So we're gonna talk about the phlebotomy section and this doctor's office there's two different chairs there's a reclining chair a red reclining chair or there's a regular phlebotomy chair with the arm some people get this chair and some people get this chair um nine times out of ten we use those red chairs for patients that are prone to passing out fainting, vomiting, not feeling good when they're getting their blood drawn, just have a phobia of getting their blood drawn. We only sit them in those red chairs because those red chairs are reclining chairs and we can push them back when we need to and call the nurse. Of course, with a regular phlebotomy chair, we can't push them back. They slide. They Every time, they slide right through that arm. They just, they just, they just slid them right on down. So, we do not, if, we always ask them, like, do you usually faint when you get a blood draw? Do you usually feel sick? Da, 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 da. And if they say yes to any of those questions, they're going in a red chair because if anything happens, you can just lay them back and call the nurse rapid response, okay? So that's why we have two different chairs. Um, most jobs only have that phlebotomy chair that I've worked at, okay? Um, other than the hospital when they're in the bed. Um, so I kind of like having the two different chairs um, just so we won't have a reaction. Even though we do have a lot of reactions, this will help us not have as many accidents of patients falling on the floor. Um, so that's why I'm glad we have the two different chairs. Now in our section, we have our section with our tubes and we also have our section where our alcohol, cotton swabs, um, urine cups, band-aids, um, of course our needles, and then at the bottom we have our extra stuff. Um, now where I'm at, we don't, which I wish we did, we do not stick, do not have our own station, so we can't decorate it how we want to. Um, we can set it up how we want to, but we always, we move every two weeks, so it's not, we're not sitting in the same spot. Um, and my job claims that they do this so we won't talk, but my thing is you want people to talk to each other, be friendly with each other, make it feel homey, because that's how you build a bond, that's how you build trust with your coworkers and stuff like that, so I don't understand why they move us around, because people gonna wanna talk regardless. No matter where you move them, they're gonna talk. We're people, we're gonna talk. But anyways, besides the point, we do not stay at one station, so um, we don't really set up our stuff a certain way, because every time we set it up a certain way, we have to move and we have to change it or we have to move our stuff where we're at. And it's just getting a little uh, hectic, so we just keep it plain and simple. Um, we just have our rack of tubes, drawers with our different needles, tourniquets. Um, we only keep two different needles, a 23 and a 25. No, a 20. we keep three, 23, 25s, and 21s. Um, some people use cotton swabs, some people use gauze. I'm a gauze person. I'm just let you know because I'm cotton swabs. They look kind of cheap and they break apart easily and I don't like it. We do have two different types of needles. Um, we have this yellow needle. I don't know if I got a video of that. We have this yellow needle and then we have like the push button needle. 
um the button needle that just attracts when you push the button and then we have the other one where you have to like manually pull it i like the push button because that's what i was trained up on and everywhere i worked had the push button so that's what i'm used to um we also have different size alcohol pads we have small ones we have big ones it don't really matter to me which one i use um we have different types of tourniquets we have those cheap flimsy ones and then we have expensive hard ones um now with me working at this company i'm under a client so it's like me and my company and my people and then it's a different company so they have their stuff we have our stuff we're not supposed to use their stuff which kind of it doesn't make sense to me because if we're all a team we're all doing the same thing we're all dealing with patient we're all drawing blood all using tubes why does it matter if i use your tubes or if you use my tubes if you run out because the rule is if they run out they have to use ours if we run out then we have to use theirs because so why can't we just share to begin with y'all some companies are just picky and petty for no reason it is what it is um we have band-aids we do have different like types of tubes of course we got the red top blue tops um dark blue tops light blue tops um purple tops gold tops red tops light green tops dark green tops pink tops yellow tops blood cultures stuff like that and of course like i said we keep the urine cups under our drawers as well so we keep everything in our little area just so we won't have to keep running to the back but sometimes we get a little busy we stick more people than we usually stick depending on the days and how the flow is and how the schedule is and of course how the person is feeling because i know nine times out of ten when i'm not feeling good i don't stick good it, it, it is what it is some days i stick way more than others some days i just i barely stick it depends on the day and the person and how the person's feeling and how their mood is throughout their work shift um so don't get discouraged if you don't stick as many people as you want to in a certain day sometimes it may not be your day um sometimes the flow is just not there it happens it happens to the best of us trust me some days you miss like a whole bunch of people some days you don't miss people at all it happens it is what it is people make mistakes nobody's perfect um so that's basically the section um we do have to do a lot of paperwork so when we call a patient back usually when i call a patient back um i say their first and last name but of one patient some patients did have a problem with me saying their first and last name so i just started saying last names and then once they come up to me i ask them to verify their birthday and then i'll take them to the back um once i take them to the back i ask them are you prone to any fading nausea while getting a blood draw they tell me yes or no and that determines which seat that i will use we are assigned a seat but depending on the patient's needs we are able to change to different seats so i use i pick my seat um i tell them my name hey my name is denia i'll be drawing your blood today okay um and i, I tell them i'll be like hey my name is denia i'll be drawing your labs today give me one moment to look up your orders and then i'll go to my computer type their name their mrn number um click their name you know check them into the lab make sure you check them into the lab because they get mad about that baby check them into the lab and then i'll look click through their orders and make sure it's for that date that date i cannot stress this enough make sure it's for that date because there's be there be labs from years ago years ago years ago and then there's even future labs make sure you get the labs for that day i print out the labs um i highlight the labs for that day so i don't lose which labs i'm looking for i make my copies and then i go take it to the mlt to order the test at this facility we are not allowed to order our tests at a different facility that i was at i was allowed to order my test so it all depends on where you work at so at this facility i wasn't able to i'm not allowed to order my test the mlts are the only ones that are able to order so i hand my orders to the mlt and then i write down what i'm supposed to draw on like my glove or something and then i go back to my patient and i tell them hey we're only drawing three tubes a day or hey we're drawing 13 tubes a day the most tubes i drawn on a person was 30 tubes in one sitting um with one stick as well um i am going to let you guys know something the bigger the needle the faster the blood flow some people may know that some people may not i'm not trying to be a note all i'm just trying to let you guys know so the more tubes that i have i try to pick the biggest vein so i can use my big needle um so yeah that was just a little a little hey if you didn't know um so i let them know how many tubes are now some patients be like why you let me know i don't really care some patients don't care some patients appreciate it i say it anyway so just to get them to mentally prepare 
for what I'm about to do. Um, Cause some patients get mad when you're drawing three tubes. They say that's too many. Some patients, um, when you're drawing 13 tubes, they be like, oh, I did more than that. I just like to let them know so they can prepare mentally so they won't look over and be like, oh my gosh, you're drawing all those tubes and pass out. Cause it's happened to me before. It's happened, it's happened. So then I wash my hands with hand sanitizer. I wash my hands with hand sanitizer. I'll put my, I'll air out my hands like this. I'll put on my gloves. I'll get my tubes. I'll get my gauze. i get my needle. I put my needle together in front of the patient. Unwrap the needle in front of the patient and put it together in front of the patient. Never have needles pre-set up because they get mad about that. And I understand, just like somebody doing your tattoo or your piercing, you wanna see them take it out the packet. So I unwrap my needles in front of my patient, put it together, get my tourniquet, everything. I get my little stool. We do get rolly chairs. And I scoot up to my patient and I ask them, do you have an arm preference? Some do have an arm preference. Some be like, it's up to you. You're the expert. That's the stuff that they be saying. And so I pick my arms. I like to do arms. My hands are always like my least favorite. But if I have to go to my hands, it's my last choice. It's never my first choice because hands are easy to blow depending on the person. So I always try to do the arms first. Right up in here, right there. The glory veins, okay? So I do my draw. I try to talk to the patient. Well, do you have any plans for today? Are you doing anything? Um, do you have treatment? Just to try to talk to the patients to ease the tension a little bit. Cause some patients feel awkward just sitting there and not saying nothing. Just like, like, cause some patients never had the treatment before. Some patients, never some patients don't know if they gonna need treatment because let me like i'm in an oncology doctor's office a cancer's a doctor's office so some patients are there to figure out what's going on with them some patients already know what's going on with them it's just a mystery to some people um so i try to ease the tension off a little bit some people i have people cry in my chair i have people um tell me their life stories in my chair i just let people vent in my chair so they can feel more comfortable with me so next time they see me, oh, can I have Denia? Yeah, I want. I have a lot of people that requested me. So that is what I do when I talk to my patients. And when I'm done with the blood draw, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna see the blood right here. Um, I'm gonna go get your label so you can verify it and then you're good to go. I'm gonna go back to the MLT, get my paperwork, get my labels. I verify my labels with my paperwork. Then I go back to my patient and I say, can you please verify this for me? And they verify their first and last name, their date of birth and their doctor. After they verified it, I label my patient, my, my tubes right in front of my patient. And I'm like, all right, you're all good to go to your next appointment. Um, nine times out of 10, they're going to see the doctor or they're going home. So I'm like, all right, you're good to go home or all right, you can go ahead and see your doctor, whichever is on their paper. So that's why I have to look at their orders and where they're going. Um, so that's basically what I do at this doctor's office. So that's basically what I do. That's basically what I do. The lab, what I got going on in the lab. It's a lot. It's a lot from the storage room to the middle section to the front. It's a lot. Um, so if you guys are interested in becoming a phlebotomist and you have any questions, just ask me down in the comment section and I'm gonna try my best. I'm being, I am actually, I've been responding recently to comments. It's so many of y'all. I'm trying to respond to all the comments that I can respond to, okay? Um, so I am still responding to people from my old videos. I'm trying to respond to people from my newly upla old, uploaded videos. I'm trying to give everybody attention, so if I don't respond to you, I am sorry, okay? But if you know anything about an MLT and the different machines that I show in this video or different products you just wanna, you know, put out there or say, or say something about or give info about, Feel free to leave it in the comment section. Um, if you know something that I don't know, you probably know something I don't know. I probably know something that you didn't know in this video. Just let me know down in the comment section. Um, if you're an MLT, let me know what you do in the comment section. If you're a phlebotomist, let me know how long you've been doing phlebotomy and if you love it or if you hate it um, and where you work. Not exactly like the name of the company, but like do you work in a hospital, do you work in a plasma center? um dialysis let me know where you work at let me know something about y'all okay and like i said if you guys know anything that i said wrong or you want to add to you can put that in the comment section as well so i hope you guys like the video um don't forget to like comment share and subscribe i'll be posting once a week if not more than once a week we're coming back to back to back with these videos you guys so i hope you guys are enjoying the content just like i'm enjoying editing and putting them out for you y'all stay safe stay cautious 
keep your hands washed be aware of your surroundings and i'll see you guys in my next video Bye.